how often do you think about starting a game? But just the idea of having to slog through an overly long tutorial was enough to turn you off. Looking at you, Pokemon. Tutorials are a necessary evil for video games. While most games, particularly FPS games, share the same inputs and have done for decades, tutorials are required for many reasons. Firstly, new players who haven't played many games before wouldn't have the necessary pre-game knowledge to draw from. Secondly, some games decide, fuck it, and change up the status quo and create the most egregious and unintuitive control scheme of all time. PUBG is a good example, where the enormous amount of different inputs required make it an absolute pain in the ass to actually do anything you want to do. And finally, games need to explain the mechanics that differentiate themselves from prior games, meaning that there wouldn't be any prior knowledge to draw from. One example of where this isn't done well is Metal Gear Rising but the blocking mechanic is so poorly explained, even though it's pivotal to the gameplay itself. Without tutorials, players would be lost, and the game would be inaccessible to a wide range of people. But similarly, overly tutorialized sections of a game can act as a massive turnoff. What comes to most people's minds when I say that is, I imagine, a Nintendo game, where the target audience of children is expected to require a more in-depth tutorial because of their small brains. Well, it turns out that Ubisoft didn't get that memo, and decided to produce the most monotonous tutorial ever for the first Assassin's Creed game. Every single detail about the game is explained to you in excruciating detail. For God's sake, I don't need to be taught how to look at things. Worst of all, the game does this in a completely artificial setting, so while that may make sense lore-wise, it actually diminishes its applicability to the real game. And to top it all off, they decided to use the slowest, most annoying voice possible to explain every single detail. Pull up the high profile button to see how your heads up display changes the context of the puppeteering inputs. While this issue was rectified in later games, such as Black Flag's tutorial which has the player explore an island after a shipwreck, even the idea of replaying Assassin's Creed 1 puts my brain to sleep. So, how can a tutorial be done well? If they are necessary for some but not for most, how can you appeal to everyone? There's always the optional tutorial which some games, such as Elden Ring, provide, but well, gamers are egotistical. Instead, I prefer a tutorial which is able to act as not just a list of button inputs, but actual teaching of the world itself. When the tutorial is blended organically into the world or the gameplay, it means that the players who don't require it still have something to gain. To this end, the game that comes to mind is Bioshock Infinite. Without much warning, players are dropped, or more accurately flown, into the beautiful Monument Island. You are left to explore it yourself, come to terms with its politics and residence, before arriving at a carnival. This is where the actual tutorial begins, although some players may have missed it entirely. Each stand offers a mini-game of sorts, which is used to tutorialize the player on different mechanics. There's shooting galleries to come to terms with how the shooting feels in the game. There's also stands to try out the different power-ups, known as Vigors, which the player can unlock later in the game. This is an excellent way to get the players to proactively explore the world and learn about the game's systems and mechanics at the same time. This isn't the best example of a tutorial though, because recently I played The Outer Wilds, and it was through the tutorial itself I was able to realise just how amazing this game is. The game opens with nothing crazy in particular to note of. You are a spaceman about to go off on your first solo journey. Simple enough, right? You have to walk over to the launch codes, and once you've done that, you're off to explore the solar system. If you want, it can be over in 5 minutes tops. But this opening area is actually the most effective and enjoyable tutorial I have ever played. You go around talking with the locals. You learn your character's relationship to them. You learn about the planet that you're on and the planets you're going to. You learn about the game's world, and then they will ask you to play a game. Or tell you about what they saw on the other side of the planet. Or ask you to help them out with fixing a broken machine. This is where the game teaches you about its mechanics. You play hide and seek, but have to use the signal scope to listen out for radios. This is what you'll be doing in the game to find the other musicians. You hear about the other side of the planet, and so you use your scout camera to explore it. This is what you'll be doing in the game to explore crevices and hard to reach places on the planets. You can fix the broken machine, and this is what you'll be doing in the game to fix your ship, and to get to grips with the maneuvering around in the suit. 
You get to learn about the game's mechanics organically, and at the same time, learn about the world and its inhabitants. By making the tutorial tied to the actual gameplay itself, it makes it more applicable and understandable for new players. And by having it tied to story and to gamify it, such as with the hide and seek, it becomes enjoyable for experienced players. Outer Wilds is a fantastic example of a tutorial done right, but it's not alone. Dark Souls North Undead Asylum, Breath of the Wild Great Plateau, Undertale's Flowey. When a game chooses to stray from the blocks of expository, tutorialized text and actually give the control to the player, they're gonna learn a lot more, whilst also being able to actually revisit the game again in the future. Put the power in the hands of the players and it can only be a good thing.